good morning or uh, good afternoon and uh, welcome to this session on renewables and uh, waste statistics. I am uh, Luca Lorenzoni and I work on uh, renewable statistics in the IEA Energy Data Center. Uh, today I'll walk you through this uh, presentation on renewables data and later my colleagues uh, Ricardo and Fabian will guide you through the exercise session. So let me show you how this presentation is uh, structured. Um, so it is divided into three different parts. In the first one, I'll talk about key renewable strengths worldwide. Uh, then uh, uh, I'll show you key statistics concepts uh, specific for renewables. And uh, lastly, uh, I'll go over the structure of the renewables and waste questionnaire. But let's start with, uh, with a question that you can answer on, uh, on Menti. So you can go um, on, um, on Menti and enter the code uh, uh, 31466873. And um, the question is, which renewable energy do you think takes the largest uh, uh, portion in total energy supply in the world? Um, so pay attention to uh, what we are talking about. We are talking about the total energy supply. And um, it's an important con concept in, uh, in energy statistics. So, um, and uh, in, particular, um, in particular for renewables, you will see later, uh, it's, um, it's, it's very important uh, how we classify uh, the different products and uh, uh, what are the, the methodology and the assumptions that uh, that we take. So I see several questions, several answers. Uh, seems that Hydro is, uh, is leading with uh, almost 20 votes. And the second is uh, solid biofuels and, uh, and uh, solar PV with, uh, with six votes. I'll show you the answer. Uh, which is uh, solid biofuels. So um, I'll give you the 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 wine in this uh, uh, in this slide. So as you can see um, here, um, you you see the the world total and renewables energy supply in twenty twenty one. Uh, the largest portion of renewables was biofuels and waste, and the largest uh, component of this part was solid biofuels. So getting back to, to, to the question, when we talk about uh, uh, renewables, um, the first things that uh, may come to mind are renewable electricity sources, uh, such as solar PV, wind power, or hydro, uh, which was the, the other option in the question that so many of you uh, chose, uh, but the renewable product most used uh, in the world is still uh, biomass, and it is uh, uh, mainly converted into heat, uh, and that is largely consumed in the in the global south for heating and uh, and uh, cooking purposes. So as you can see from this slide, there are several energy products that have increased greatly um, in the last three decades. Uh, it's good to see that uh, the renewable space um, is slightly higher than the TES rate. And this is mainly due to favorable policies for renewables, especially for solar PV and wind. Uh, but as we previously saw, uh, the share in total energy supply is still 14.4%. Uh, and it's necessary that the renewables contribution to TES grows faster since uh, as you know, renewables are a key um, uh, for the, the, the decarbonization of the, of the energy sector. So in the chart on the left, uh, uh, you can see the share of renewables around the world. And you see that Africa is the largest share. Here we, we get back to what I said about the solid biofuels use in the global south. Uh, indeed, the renewable product most used in Africa and in the other regions except OECD is biomass. And uh, this is mostly a traditional use of biomass that principally means uh, burning the fuel uh, inefficiently. In OECD countries, uh, biomass is less used and generally in a modern way, 
for example, for producing um, electricity. And still uh, in the OECD, uh, in which you can see the share is one of the lowest, the renewables development uh, has been significant in the last years, especially to generate electricity. Uh, but the share is still low because uh, uh, there are energy intensive final consumption sectors uh, such, uh, uh, such as the transport sector, for example, that are still uh, heavily reliant on fossil fuels. So concerning the sectoral consumption on the right, um, again, the, the green slice is mainly composed of traditional use of, uh, of biomass. Uh, the electricity plant supplies um, is what we should uh, uh, pursue to expand since we would like uh, to electrify the final consumption sector as much as possible, uh, consuming uh, uh, electricity produced uh, by renewables. So this leads me to the final slide of this first section where you can see the world electricity production in which uh, uh, renewables represent uh, uh, the 28% in 2021. So within renewables, hydro, um, which is one of the oldest uh, renewable technologies, is the most widespread. Solar PV and wind are the two that have grown faster in the last years, uh, posing uh, new challenges for the, for, the, for the power sector management, let's say, uh, since they are intermittent. So uh, the generation does not always match uh, the demand and they are often uh, unpredictable. So I invite you to, to follow the strategy proposed by the agency to face these challenges. And now let's move to the uh, key concept uh, uh, section. So this is very important and it relates to uh, the first uh, the, the question that I, that I posed to you uh, before. So as you can see, renewable products are classified into four groups. Uh, and this classification is based on the form of primary energy considered from a statistical point of view, and how this form can be converted into another. So I'll explain this starting from the first group, uh, electricity only. So if you consider wind or hydro, uh, the first form of energy that is generated is uh, mechanical energy, uh, for example, from the rotation of a wind turbine that then is converted into electricity. So from a statistical point of view, we consider electricity as the primary form of energy since the mechanical energy in almost all cases is directly converted into electricity. There are no other outlets and the mechanical energy would not be of interest from a statistical point of view since electricity is the first common marketable commodity that is, uh, that is generated. For the second and fourth group, the primary form is heat. Uh, for the second group, uh, the production is considered in the form of heat because in this case, there are two possible outlets. Um, heat that can be directly used, for example, using geothermal heat for district heating, or heat that can be used to generate electricity, uh, for example, in a solar thermal uh, power plant. Uh, the fourth group includes the heat extracted from the environment and uh, used in heat pumps. And in this case, it is not possible to convert it into electricity. So it is reported in this uh, separate category. Uh, finally, in the third group, uh, uh, we have combustible fuels. Uh, so as primary form of energy, we consider the fuels themselves and uh, it's the only form that can be uh, stored. Um, so here you can see the solid biofuels classification and the, the definition is in the center of the slide. Uh, they are all considered the primary products except charcoal that is derived from the carbonization of wood. And uh, there are some products that need a specific explanation like uh, one of them is black liquor that is a byproduct of the paper manufacturing process. And this is actually liquid but is conventionally considered within solid biofuels. Uh, then we have renewable industrial waste that is usually solid organic matter. Uh, so it is considered within solid biofuels. And the most common product is natural rubber components of, uh, of waste tires. So if you are not sure if a product can be considered solid biofuels or industrial waste, just reach out to us and we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. Um, 
now we have uh, another question that you can answer on uh, on Menti, uh, and it is: uh, What is an example of wood uh, of how wood is used in energy statistics? So moving to the next slide, the code uh, is still uh, uh, the same: uh, three one four six six eight seven three. So uh, there are four options. And uh, um, you should uh, um, you should uh, point out uh, uh, which of these flows um, uh, can be reported uh, related to wood can be reported in uh, in energy statistics. So we have uh, as material for making furniture is the first uh, uh, burning for home heating is the second. The wood the residues burned in a landfill is the third, and none of these is the fourth. I see that uh, um, everybody, uh, almost everybody, um, pointed out uh, burning for home meeting. That is actually the uh, the right answer. And uh, let's explore uh, the other answers. So furniture is a, a non-energy use that should not enter the energy statistics domain. And uh, regarding the, the third wood residues uh, burned uh, in a landfill, from how is how it is written in this um, in this question, uh, we cannot deduce that the energy generated uh, from burning the material is used in, somehow. So the material could be burned just to reduce its uh, its volume. Uh, basically, only only ash remains, and this is not uh, this is not an energy used. So in this slide, you can see how liquid biofuels are reported in the renewables questionnaire compared to the uh, oil questionnaire. In the renewables one, we report only pure liquid biofuels. This means that you don't have to report the portion of biofuels blended with oil products. We report the blended products in the oil questionnaire. So here you can see an example which a country produces 1,000 kilotons of diesel containing 10% of biodiesel. And uh, half, of these, uh, half of this uh, product is exported and the other half is used in, uh, in road transport. Um, so 100 kilotons of biodiesel are produced in the, in the country and are reported in the uh, renewables production of biodiesel, but the other flows uh, concern um, uh, blended products, therefore they are reported all in the oil questionnaire. In the renewables balance, you will, you will report the production of biodiesel and then in the transformation sector, uh, this amount will be reported under the blending with oil products flow. And in this way, pure liquid biofuels are transferred uh, to blended products. And this concept applies also to biogases when biogases are blended with, uh, with uh, natural gas. Uh, now let's see the data sources and the types of data collection. So for the supply side, data can be collected from energy producers, importers, exporters, while for the demand side, it can be collected from uh, households, uh, enterprises, uh, and so on. Um, data can be collected through surveys or using admin administrative data, uh, but very often an integrated approach is adopted. Is adopted. That means using uh, uh, the different ways of collecting data and making uh, estimations where is needed in order to, to gather the values uh, for all the energy products and flows that, uh, that we need. So having a closer look at the different types of data collection, uh, surveys are the best ways of collecting data since uh, you collect uh, directly what you need. However, they are usually time consuming and expensive, so it's difficult to carry them out every year. Uh, what is generally done is taking a survey every two or three years and making estimations for, for the coming years. Uh, concerning administrative data, they are generally data collected from governmental bodies in response to legislation, policies, uh, regulations. These are more uh, uh, economical, but it's necessary to pay attention to the products definitions and um, inconsistencies due to uh, the administrator's lack of expertise in, in data analysis. Uh, then you can get measured data. 
And finally, in absence of data sources, uh, you can make estimations. Here's there is an example for solar PV in case you need uh, uh, electricity generation, but to have on information on capacity installed, you can calculate the generation assuming a, a capacity factor. Now, before moving to the final part of the presentation, uh, I leave you some uh, uh, dissemination links. Uh, I let you explore them by, by yourself. And uh, now let's see the questionnaire. So this is the structure of the questionnaire. And um, even if you don't uh, use it, uh, I mean, if you don't have to submit it to IEA, um, it can still be useful to, to cross-check uh, the products and flows that we collect uh, with, what, uh, with what you collect and with what you have in your database. And uh, then in the questionnaire that you can, you can of course, download for, for free from our website, uh, there are different checks and uh, automatic sums that you can adopt for your data validation. So it can be useful to have it uh, as a reference. So the first table uh, is used to report the gross electricity uh, and heat production. As you can imagine, these values should be consistent with the electricity questionnaire, even though here we collect many more details for renewable products. Uh, so the table is divided into two parts, the gross electricity production reported in gigawatt hour and gross heat production reported in, in terajoule. So the producers are classified as main activity producer that are economic unit whose principal activity is to produce energy and auto producer that are economic activity whose principal activity is not producing energy, but they produce energy to support uh, the principal activity. Um, so these are um, further divided into electricity only plants, combined heat and power plants and heat only plants. And uh, regarding heat reporting, all heat production from main activity producer plants should be reported, while in case of auto producers, only heat sold to third parties should be reported. Now you can see the table 2A. Uh, it is the largest table with uh, 13 products and uh, listed across the top and more than 60 flows. So regarding the uh, definition of uh, energy products, as I think you already know, the follow, we follow the international recommendations on, uh, on energy statistics. Uh, most products are reported in terajoule on a net calorific basic, basis, except for charcoal and liquid biofuels, which are reported in, uh, in kilotons. If you see the rows, uh, this is broken up into supply, transformation sector, energy sector, and final, energy and non-energy consumption sector. And final consumption is divided into industry, transport, and other sectors, which include the residential, agriculture, etc. And in case of energy sector and final consumption, the flow should be reported according to the international uh, standard industrial classification uh, categories. So now table 3A. Uh, this table has five parts and it contains very important information used uh, uh, also for verifying the information enter entered into the other tables. So the first part collects data on the maximum electrical capacity of the renewable plants. Um, if, uh, um, um, if electricity generation is reported in table one, then capacity must be reported here by, by type and size. And this is uh, reported in uh, megawatts. Concerning solar collector surface, it is reported in 1000 square meters. And let me specify that does not include neither solar PV surface nor solar thermal power collectors source surface like uh, CSP. It's only about solar thermal collectors mainly used in the residential sector to, to heat water. Uh, then we have the production capacity of liquid biofuels that is reported in kilotons per year. And finally, we collect the average net calorific value and the density of the various liquid biofuels. Now, uh, I wanted to mention something specific for solar PV uh, regarding to table 3A that uh, we started to collect from, uh, from this year. 
basically, uh, uh, a typical solar PV system is composed of uh, solar PV panels that generate electricity in direct current in DC and uh, an inverter that converts the electricity from DC to alternate current uh, AC. Uh, so we have a, a, a capacity of the panels installed that is in DC and the capacity of the converter that is in AC. So for design reasons, uh, the ratio between the DC and the AC capacity can be up to 1.5. Uh, so the panel's capacity can be um, 50% uh, higher than the inverter uh, power rates. And for this reason, we ask to report both the capacities for a given plan. So we ask countries to uh, clarify this information with the data providers. And uh, if countries do not have both the information, AC and AC, at least clarify what kind of capacity uh, they are referring to. So if it is uh, AC or DC. The next table, table four, give a detail, uh, a detail breakdown of uh, production of solid biofuels and biogases. Uh, for example, solid biofuel is divided into fuel wood, black liquor, bagasse, animal waste, other vegetable materials and residues, and industrial waste, the renewable part. And the figures should be reported in, in terajoule. So the important thing is that the total amount of production of uh, solid biofuels in table four should match the number uh, reported in indigenous production of solid biofuels so in table two. So the same principle applies to, to biogases. Uh, in this slide, you can see table five, that is for imports by country of origin, and table six, that is for exports of countries by destination. And at the moment, uh, at the, moment the products uh, concerned are liquid biofuels and wood pellets, since they are the most traded commodities, but there could be changes uh, in the future. Finally, uh, this year we have introduced uh, table seven, where we collect non-energy use data of renewable products. Uh, now, in terms of flows, uh, the structure is a mirror of the energy sector and final consumption sectors for, for energy uses. Um, however, it's good to clarify the boundaries of this, uh, of this collection and uh, only renewables used to replace fossil fuels, which are currently reported as final non-energy consumption, should be uh, present in the scope of energy statistics and as uh, reported in this table. So some examples are the non-energy use uh, of gaseous biofuels replacing natural gas as feedstock, feedstocks, or um, uh, liquid biofuels replacing naphtha, LPG, lubricants in the chemical and petrochemical sector, um, as well as solid biofuels used to replace coal products in the industry sector to produce uh, dyes or uh, fungicides, for example. So it has to be clear that uh, uh, certain non energy use uh, uh, of renewables, especially those that are clearly irrelevant to energy statistics like solid biofuels for furniture, construction, or alcohols used in the food industry, sh should be uh, left outside of the, of the scope. So here uh, is a schematic overview of uh, the relationships within uh, uh, the renewables questionnaire and uh, other annual questionnaires. So renewable questionnaire has a strong relationship, especially with the, with the electricity and oil for, uh, for liquid biofuels and then gas for, for blended gas. As you can see, there are many links between tables and we use the, the links to, to validate, uh, also to validate our data. So here I left you a few helpful links uh, specific to renewables. Uh, there are some documents that could be uh, of interest uh, for you. And, um, and that's it. Here you can see our email addresses. If you have any question, don't uh, hesitate to reach out to us. 